JavaScript is so entrenched in the game. Uh, the languages that you see out there that people will put forward as being better in JavaScript because of this reason or that reason, this reason, that reason, I think for a large part will never replace uh, JavaScript, maybe with the exception of in certain very specific niche circumstances. Something you have to understand about programming languages and technology in general. In general, I learned this from my uh, uncle who, uh, he's dead now. Somebody, he used to manage projects for the Canadian government, big budgets, 25 million, 50 million dollar projects. So pretty cool stuff too. And one thing he told me, he said, before technology A gets replaced by technology B, technology B has to be about 10 times better than technology A. Now, how do you quantify 10 times better? It depends how you look at it. So my larger point is that, yes, there are some advantages here and there with you know, some of these languages that are coming out to challenge JavaScript. But I think, generally speaking, uh, they're at best incremental or circumstantial advantages, and JavaScript is so well established that it's not going anywhere. So this is, again, I suffered this as well when I was a young nerdling noob. You're always looking for the latest and greatest technology. You're hoping to find that language, that one language, that one framework, that you know, special computer, whatever, software, is going to give you this big advantage in the game. And I can tell you, what gives you the big advantage in the game is being really, really comfortable with the fundamentals of software development regardless of language, because once you go there, it doesn't matter what language you use. You can use any language and you're going to be very productive. You'd be very productive whether you use Java or JavaScript, you go to Dart or you go to PHP or you go to, uh, you don't want to go to Ruby, uh, you go to Python, Ruby joke, that's just a Ruby joke. Anyway, the point is that it is not often that you see a very well-established technology get replaced. Something dramatic has to happen and it's not often. And when you got a language like JavaScript, which is, you know, it's either the most popular or definitely the top three most popular, most used programming languages in the world today, it's not going anywhere. So if you have this fear that you're going to learn the wrong language, unless you're learning Delphi or Flash ActionScript, you should be okay. Even if you learn those languages, once you learn the concepts behind programming, they carry over to all these other languages very easily. So, for example, once you become very good with the fundamentals of Java, or JavaScript, or C Sharp, or Python, or even Ruby, heaven forbid, you would be able to jump into a different stack, a different language like this, and be very productive. People get caught up with syntax, you know, the actual code that you write. Who cares? The syntax. You learn the syntax in a matter of minutes, right? It's not a big deal. The only thing you have to learn about when you're dealing with one language versus another is each language will have its idiosyncrasies, if you will, uh, its weirdness. Its weirdness is this, that you're going to have to contend with. But again, you, you learn that it's not a big deal. You have to understand the landscape, the ecosystem around the language. Again, we live in this golden era of Google and YouTube. It's easy to find this information out. If you're a noob when it comes to software development and programming, if this stuff is still hazy for you, I can understand that you're worried about this, but trust me, trust me. Once you become a full developer, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the language you use. You're going to start choosing languages and stacks and libraries and so forth based on the needs of the project. You won't care. Yes, you're going to have your preferences, I suppose, but you won't care. It'd be like a, a professional boxer or an MMA fighter um, caring about the gloves he, he they wear, you know, in training. Or uh, a, a professional guitarist, you know, caring, worrying that, oh, no, I won't be able to play a Gibson. Oh, no, I only play Stratocasters. Doesn't make any sense. Right? Of course, you can have preferences. You, one fighter may prefer one type of glove over another, but they can still fight with both gloves. Uh, guitarists may prefer one type of guitar over another, but you know, whether, what, 
whatever guitar that you put in their hands, if they're well-trained guitarists, they can play the they can play the instrument. It's not a big deal. Same thing with programming. You sit down. If you got uh, good experience in language A and you're going to jump to language B, it's no big deal. As I said before, if I had a project where I was going to do everything in um, I don't know JavaScript Node.js, that was my project, and I found somebody who had six months' experience with JavaScript. That's all I've ever done is JavaScript, no other coding background. And I found another guy who's done four years with PHP or four years with Python and Django or four years with C Sharp or four years with Java, whatever. Somebody with four years experience on the web. I would choose them before I'd hire somebody with only six months experience having done Node. Even though this person, I would say I hired a C, the C Sharp.net guy. He's never done Node.js. His four years of experience will, how, will mean that within about five hours, he'll speed way ahead of the person who's been working on Node.js for six months, and that's their first, uh, uh, their first work in the web stack. You see what I'm saying? Don't get caught up with the languages. Consistent message that I have. I've been at the game a long time. Trust me. It's the way it works. So uh, don't let anybody tell you. Don't let anybody tell you that you have to learn this or you have to learn that or you have to learn this. Let the market tell you and your personal taste tell you. I'm going to answer a question that somebody put to me. I'm going to paraphrase because English is not his first language. So if I read this verbatim, it's, uh, it's going to be difficult. So basically, he had a job as a WordPress developer. He decided to leave the job. And uh, then he thought to himself, eh, maybe I'll go back to university and uh, get a bachelor's degree. And then he decided to drop out because he didn't like what they were being taught there. I'm not sure what that's all about. But uh, here's the main point. He said he started looking for jobs, I guess, as a developer. Um, but he says he needs time to improve his skills because he sees that his friends, who has the same education as him, they got good jobs that he wants to get. So here he is. Uh, so he says, uh, should I continue or should I just drop this and go into another field? Well, I think it's just a question of skills. You already got a job. You had a WordPress job. You didn't like that job. Fair enough. And that's, that's cool. And some people don't like doing WordPress and that's fine. So what you have to do is you have to start building a little bit of a track record and give yourself some time. Everybody's a little bit too impatient, especially younger people with themselves. Don't be so impatient with yourself. Give yourself time. You're able to learn WordPress, you're able to learn some coding, just develop your skills. So what do you do? Do a couple of freebie, freelance jobs, little tiny programming jobs, that's all. Build your resume a little bit, learn to write some code there, you know, learn to communicate, set up a site, showcase your work. You might have to do two or three things. Remember, if you do this, get paid, maybe do a couple of little gigs where you're not making much or anything, you know, for a few months. You can be well ahead, of, where? well ahead of people who spend four years in university with big student loan debts. So all I say is keep working at it. Do some real world jobs. You're going to hit some roadblocks. Go on Google, answer questions, get, get questions answered, etc., etc. And you make it. The only time you're going to not make it is if you give up. So don't give up. It can be frustrating at times, I understand. But don't worry about it. And you said your friend, he had the same education, but he's gone places. Find out why. Ask him, hey, what you do? How'd you get your job? What, what am I doing wrong? Ask him, honestly, tell me why. What, you know, maybe he just got lucky. Or maybe you just need to work on some little things here and there he can help you out with, right? Don't give up. You already got a job already. You got WordPress. That's good. WordPress developer, I suppose. I suppose you are writing code. If you want to pivot into another type of development, well, do a couple free jobs in that other type of development that you want to do. All right, and I hope... If you did this WordPress developer job, if you worked there a good six months or a year, that's good. That's good to have in your resume. But if you have like, I worked here for three months, or I worked here for two months, prospective uh, employers are not going to go, hmm, why does, he keep, why does he keep quitting his jobs, right? So there you go. I hope I answered that question. Bye-bye.